This is ABC 7 at 5. <laughs> oh, that's great. Go Canotillo! Today, students at Canotillo Elementary held an indoor parade to honor the Canotillo football team. Tomorrow, the Eagles will become the first ever El Paso area team to play in the state Final Four. The children were joined by the high school's mascot and even got to meet the football players looking to win a state title. And that was a scene at Damian Elementary School where students held a pep rally to motivate and inspire the Canotillo Eagles. They wore orange shirts and held signs with messages for the players. This was part of the school district's Orange Out campaign. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us. I'm Rick Cabrera. Our complete coverage of the Canotillo Eagles historic playoff run continues in just a few minutes. But first, a disturbing story. A resident contacted ABC7 concerned their neighbor is torturing and killing puppies. ABC 7's Maria Garcia is live with the story you'll see only on ABC 7. Maria? Well, Rick, we want to warn our viewers some of the details and some of the images in this story are disturbing. Some residents in Kern Place, an old quiet neighborhood north of UTEP, say their neighbor has been killing puppies. One of the residents even clandestinely took this video. The resident says he saw the suspected neighbor throw a puppy into a ceiling fan and tried to record it. Several residents spoke to me, but for fear of retaliation, didn't want their identities revealed. They say one of their neighbors has had 12 puppies in the last few months, and all of them have disappeared. This one, they say, was found dead, decomposing in the suspected neighbor's yard. The residents say the man in question would contact people, giving puppies away on Craigslist. But later, the dogs would disappear or be found dead. A resident says this is one of the puppies wrapped in a plastic bag in the trash. Well, these people don't do their homework when they offer these puppies and these dogs to people that are supposedly giving them a good home. But something needs to change that route, too, that they can't just do that. See if they have a vet that knows them. You know, go to their house, check with their neighbors. I know it's a lot to ask, but if it saves one life, one little dog that doesn't have to be tortured, why not? Loretta Hyde with the Animal Rescue League, whom you just heard, helped neighbors file the alleged abuse to police. Now, we are not revealing the suspected neighbor's name because he has not been charged. Police say they do have an open investigation on him. Back to you, Rick. Okay, Maria, thank you very much. A murder suspect is awaiting extradition to Doñana County. 20 year old Mario Soto turned himself in, and U.S. Marshals took him into custody here in El Paso. Soto is suspected of stabbing and killing 21 year old Gilberto Wences in Anthony, New Mexico, back in April. Investigators say Wences was walking home after he got off of work. Soto allegedly attacked Wences in an alley. The Las Cruces mother of a six year old girl is furious. She says the man who allegedly raped her daughter is not in jail. She reached out to ABC 7 to share their story. Daniel Landon is the man arrested on suspicion of sexually assaulting her little girl. ABC 7's Josie Ortegon is live from our New Mexico mobile newsroom with a troubling story you'll see only Rick, on ABC 7. Mother says she witnessed Daniel Landon assaulting her child. As reported, Daniel Landon was arrested in January and charged with criminal sexual contact. This week, he was also charged with criminal sexual penetration. Landon's bond was originally $10,000, but it was increased to $25,000. Monday, he was given 48 hours to raise the additional amount. Jail records show he has not done so. The judge assigned to the case has since recused herself. The DA's office tells me an arrest warrant can't be issued until a new judge is appointed to the case. This mother fears other children could be at risk until that happens. All the occasions happen when I was in the other room during broad daylight in front of the other kids. So what I'm worried about if he's willing to do it in front of me, like basically when I'm on the other side of the wall, I, he could do it any, to any kid at any time. A spokeswoman with the district attorney's office tells me it could be at least 10 days until a new judge is assigned to the case. Live in Las Cruces with our New Mexico mobile newsroom, Josie Ortegon, ABC7. Josie, thank you very much. The storm track weather now looks like the nice weather will continue for the next few days. 
Chief Meteorologist Doppler Dave Spillman has your first forecast. Doppler? Yeah, you know, we had temperatures running well above the average again for this time of year. We climbed into the upper 60s and even some lower 70s. Look at the number that we hit officially out at the airport today. 71, our average high. Normally, 57 degrees, 43 the start to the morning, so it was still fairly mild as we uh, made our way through the morning hours. Look at the highs across the area region. 68 Diamond, 67 Las Cruces, Alamogordo at 68, 59, even up in elevation at uh, Rio de Janeiro. We're going to be looking at a nice night tonight. Tomorrow, we're going to have another very nice day. Temperature is going to be hovering right around 70, but then some changes as we look ahead to the weekend, your Saturday and Sunday. That's all coming up, Rick. All right, Doppler, thank you very much. Go Canatillo! Tomorrow, the Eagles will be playing for a chance to advance the Texas State title game. ABC7 is bringing you unprecedented coverage of this historic playoff run. We will be the only El Paso TV station working with the Lubbock Independent School District to bring you live coverage of the game itself right here on ABC7 and online at KVIA.com. The Eagles' semifinal game starts at 6 p.m. tomorrow night. It's against Ennis. I will be in Lubbock with Louis Del Rio to provide play by play. Of the historic state semifinal showdown. So, how did a bunch of kids from Canotillo High School become one of the best high school football teams in the state? ABC 7's Darren Hunt is live to tell us how it all happened. He continues our complete coverage. Darren? Rick, we got the Eagles mascot behind us here. Now, many of the star players on this year's Canotillo High School squad have been playing together since they were little kids, some as far back as the fifth grade when they were only about 10 years old. Now, this is a picture of team leader quarterback Javier Gomez when he was playing for the Westside Cobras Pee Wee team. Some of Gomez's 41 senior teammates also played on that team, as well as rival Pee Wee teams, the Westside Mustangs and the Westside Eagles. Those three Pee Wee teams fed into Canutillo's two middle schools, Alderete and Canutillo Middle Schools. They were big rivals in seventh and eighth grade, with Alderete winning the seventh grade title and Canutillo winning the eighth grade title. The next Next year, when players from those two schools and those three Pee Wee teams united at Kenya Teo High under head coach Scott Brooks, it was clear that something special was in store during their senior year. We all do what our coaches coaches to do. We work as a team. Um, our, bro our brotherhood is real close, so we know we got each other's backs, and we play kind of the football. What is Candy Teal football? When somebody asks you that, what do you say? We play fast physical defense. Now, Kenya Tio's defense has been key during this playoff run, allowing just one offensive touchdown in each of the past three games. Offensively, it's been Gomez's leadership under center that has been key. Coming up at six, you'll hear Gomez's inspiring story about having to become the man of the house many years too soon. Look at this eagle. He's pretty intimidating, huh? <laughs> yeah. That's pretty intimidating right that there. That is. Right? Look oh. out, Ennis. The <laughs> eagles are coming. There you go. All right. Thank you so much, Darren. Again, uh, can't wait to see your story on uh, the quarterback Gomez. Javier Gomez coming up at six. And also mention that defense, four shutouts this season by the Canotillo Eagles. Very impressive. Chicano activists in El Paso were up in arms when they learned the TxDOT wanted to tear down the historic Lincoln Center in central El Paso. Today, BC7 asked El Paso State Rep for an update on his efforts to save the building. Plus, next Monday alone, we're going to do about 38 million packages. A word of advice if you will be mailing out Christmas gifts this year, you better start making plans to ship them out very soon. And in storm track weather, Doppler. A couple of other warm days ahead for us, but then we're we'll going to start to see some changes for your Saturday and Sunday, then some cooler air next week. Coming up in full forecast. This is ABC.